All right, here we go. So yesterday we looked at board account to determine whether it was manipulable. And today, what was that? Yeah, this is the one we, well, for those of you that like the manga version of this, the manga, how am I doing? Um, you can keep it if you want the uh, the newer one that's numbered correctly. Then then grab today's pack it off the table. No, oh, no, it's it's totally. You can have it as a souvenir of your senior year or junior year. If that's, if that's the case. Um, I don't need it. I don't need it. So. A lot of paper, I know, I know, but they, I know we filled some trees, but you know what? All our tests and quizzes are on, are on the computer, so we're saving a lot of paper. So, I'm so, all right, so, um, let's look at this. So, when I'm talking about majority rule and counter sets method, we're going to look at examples with odd numbers of voters, okay? So, to make it real simple, because we can't have a majority, it's a majority all the time if we have a given number of votes. We got to ensure that we have an odd number of voters so that majority rule is, is, is guaranteed. Now, this is my learning target. This is what we're trying to learn. That you guys understand what voting systems are strategy proof. Remember, strategy proof are voting systems that are non manipulable, that you can't manipulate to get another outcome. All right. So we're asked the question, is majority rule manipulable? Well, what do we already know about majority rule? Well, we know it adheres to those three rules of being fair to voters and treating all candidates equally. And we also had something called monotonicity. Remember monotonicity was confusing at first, but all that means is if I take my vote, my ballot's this right here where, where where I voted for voter for, for candidate A, but but candidate B won. Now, if, if, if I didn't vote for the winning candidate, but I, I was able to change my ballot to, to vote, to change my, my ballot so that my candidate B would be in first place, now this, this makes sense, right? Candidate B should still win. Candidate B should still win. That, that's monotonicity. That that's candidate B will still win. Does that make sense? Yeah, this, this makes sense. Because if you take a vote from the losing candidate, so you're taking a vote away from candidate A, they didn't win the election, and you're gonna give it to candidate B who won the election, that switch should still have B, can B winning, all right? That's, does anybody have a problem with that? So that's monotonicity. That makes sense, right? That's monotonicity. That's what monotonicity is. So what this is just the, the initial winner will always be winning, no matter who. No, that monotonicity, that, that's the rule of monotonicity. That, that's what that is. Yeah. Because this, this doesn't always work for air system. When you change your vote from a, a losing candidate and put it to the winning candidate in the hair system, it doesn't always work out that that second election, the same winner wins. So, the monetary is just like that. Like, unmanipulable. Uh, monetary is a test of manipulability. Okay. It's a test, it's, it's one of the things. It makes sense when we're talking about majority rules. It makes sense. But when we start applying the Tahir system or counter say method or some of the other voting system, it doesn't make as much sense. But we still test for monotonicity. And we do that by changing the order of the votes. We're taking the vote from a losing candidate, giving it to the winning candidate, and then we test to see if we get the same winner. That's the test for monotonicity. You had that question on the last test. Some of you did. 
So that's how it, that's how we do it. That's how we test for monotonicity. Are there any other ways I could alter this ballot? There's two candidates. Is there any other way I could alter this? I, I'm either going to vote for candidate A first in the in my preference ballot, or I'm going to vote for candidate B first as my preference ballot. And then by default, that means A is second and, and B is second respectively. So that makes sense. So guys, there's no other way that I can I can vote. I either can vote for candidate B first, or I can can vote for candidate A first. There's no other way I can manipulate my ballot. Questions on that? So that is monotonicity. So know that in two candidate elections, monotonicity means that majority rule elections are not manipulable, bringing us to the main theorem of for manipulability. So we before we've had this, we've had this. We majority rules. This theorem, May's theorem, says number one, it treats all voters equally. Number two, treats all candidates equally. And we had this last time. We saw this as number three, as in, and as monotone. Well, now we've got even further with with manipulability for two candidates voting systems. Not just saying it's monotone, but saying it's non-manipulable. Meaning you can't change that outcome. One voter cannot change that outcome. Questions on that? Now that all sounds really good. I mean, this is another reason why majority rules makes us happy, but you got you guys, this only solves our problems for two candidate election purposes. We we have we don't have a lot of scenarios where there's just two candidates. We have a lot of scenarios where there's more, three or more candidates, and we don't have a perfect system for that. They're all flawed in some way. All right, I'm going to go to the next page. We're going to talk about Condorcet's method. Is Condorcet's method manipulable? Well, it kind of is and it kind of isn't. It's based on majority rule. So you can't say it's truly manipulable, but there are some weaknesses that, where that can, it can be exploited. So know that one voter cannot unilaterally change an election result from one candidate to another that he prefers. It's not always possible. I mean, sometimes it is. Sometimes there are cases that they can do that. They can get a, a candidate to win that they prefer more. Sometimes they can throw in a little ranch into the system and create what's called a counter say voting paradox where we have no winner we got a three-way or four-way tie so when i say unilaterally i'm saying by by itself or by oneself one person alone can't do and change the entire outcome all the time sometimes they do sometimes they don't so you can't i can't say the counter say is is, is manipulable well, let's look at some examples. Let's look at what a voter can possibly do. And I've got a couple of examples I'm going to run through. So example one, this is counter say method. It doesn't matter where you go, so where you start, but I'm just going to put voter A versus voter B. So this is my vote right here. And this is the one I can manipulate. All right. I'm just going to, this is the sincere one. We always start with the sincere scenario. And this one, I'm going to manipulate it. So A versus B, A wins the first one, B wins the second one, A wins the third one. Now we go A versus C. A wins the first one, C wins the second one, and C now wins. Now we got to put C back against B. We got to loop them around because A lost. So A C versus B, well, C wins the first one, B wins the second one, C is our winner. So you want to see that C won this? C won, right? Well, how can I change this? Well, I can change this by bumping C down in my preference ballot. So this is my new one. You see I moved B up, C got moved up. So one voter, one preference ballot, Look what I can look, look what I can do. So I'm going to go A versus B. So when I do that, A gets the first one, B gets the second one, A gets the third one. 
A wins again. That's where they won there. So now A is going to take on C. And A wins the first one. C wins the second one. C wins the third one. That's what happened here. And now let's go candidate C versus candidate B. Well, B wins the first one. B wins the second one. C wins the third one. What just happened? Well, by changing that position, I upended C. B is now my winner. Do you remember the shell game? So B loses to A. A loses to C. And C loses to B. So we have no winner. So this is loses to each way. And so there's no dominant candidate. The shell game. This is Condorcet voting paradox. And this is what it looks like. This is the pattern I want you to see. Remember, a lot of learning in here has to do with patterns. Notice A, B, C, they're, they're all spread out. There's no double up. B, C, A, there's no doubles there in those rows. C, A, B, now look at this one. Well, I got two C's here. I got two B's here. There's a, that, that's, got a, that's got an outcome that's, that, that's gonna be a dominant candidate. This one is what Connor says voting paradox looks like. You've got no repeats in any of the rows. They're evenly spread out. So how do we how do we create this? So just know that this is not technically manipulation, but you can always throw a wrench in with, with creating these kind of say voting paradox sometimes. And sometimes it works, sometimes it's it's difficult to do. Just know that there's cases that voter may feel. It, it's a better scenario for nobody winning that contest than, than the current winner. And so that's why they would use this, this strategy to, to create a counter say voting paradox. Well, some of the hints on how you create this is you take, you're gonna just manipulate one ballot on, on your own ballot. So on one ballot, when I say one ballot, I, I'm, I'm talking about this just using one voter one voter's preference ballot. You're going to move. You're going to move the winner. So you have you have winners that are in the top columns, in the top tier, at the top level, the top row. You're going to move the winner down one box. All right. And you're going to do this where in the column where they're on top. All right. So, and then you got to look and, and evaluate whether everybody's spaced up in the rows evenly. So, I'll say evenly populated. different candidates. And I'm just going to tell you this is a guide. This is this is how it kind of works. It doesn't always work out with every scenario that and probably you're going to use. The least matter of the things that you should be able to do is is, is you should be able to recognize voters who are motivated to change the outcome. And that's easy to do. If you get if you see a voter that didn't get their first choice winning the contest, you know that they're motivated to maybe do something about it. Now that's easy to do, to, to recognize those voters that are motivated to change the outcome, but what's harder to do is to try to figure out if they can do anything. 
And it's really something that they can make a change towards. And so some of this is just gonna be trial and error. Some of it, you're just gonna say, you know what? I'll move on, I'll go on to the next problem. I'll just do the next one. Maybe, maybe I see it the first time. All right, now that's the notes. We're gonna do some examples. And know that this, this counter say voting paradox is a strategy. It's a strategy. It's a strategy for those whiny little pouty people you come across that don't get their way. It's like, if I can't get my way, you can't get, you're not gonna get your way either. Who needs more time on this? I think I showed this yesterday. This kind of like growly, unhappy wolf. When there's no winner, think of it. This is the way I play. If I can't have it, no one can. That's a strategy. You will run across this in life. And it's a way, it's a strategy, guys. It's a legitimate way to play your cards. All right, let's look at some of these problems. Again, this is the sincere one. This is the one we're starting one, and we're going to manipulate it over here. And we're going to manipulate John's vote. First of all, you got to identify what's out of order. So we got three choices. They're going to, these, these, these guys are going to go on a field trip and they're trying to decide what beverage to take. Uh, it's, it's between milk, soda, and juice. So milk, soda, and juice, well, it's spread out in the first row. That's good. Soda, juice, soda. Well, they got the soda doubled up here. They got soda doubled up. Juice, milk, milk. Well, they got milk doubled up here too. You guys see that we got to kind of spread it out. I'm going to spread it out with John's reference ballot. We're going to change this. We're going to switch that up. So John's first vote is still for juice. But well, we're going to mix up the order of soda and milk. Milk and soda. Well, now you see my rows are all spaced out. There's no doubles. It does kind of matter what order it is. You want to see that each of those candidates each have a, a top tier or first place vote. You do want to see that they're spread out that way too. But sometimes if there's an uneven distribution and you have an uneven match of candidates, you can't you can't evenly space this. With a three by three, it's easy to see. That's what you'll see on the quiz tomorrow. But like this one is a five by four. This one, we can recognize who's motivated, but to do anything about it, this one's a, this one's a monster. All right? In relation to why um, John's, like, what is it the last row? Yep, or... this is the one that we're going to stay. But well, let's see if this works. So, well, let's look at who won, who wins this? Who wins this outcome? Well, it's milk versus soda. And milk wins, soda wins, soda wins. Then soda versus juice. Soda wins the first vote. Soda wins the second vote. And juice wins the last vote. So you see that John doesn't want to drink juice on his field trip. So he's the one that's motivated to change his, his order, his preference ballot order. And when he does it, look what happens. So juice, so they're going to bring soda according to this first sincere ballot. But after John manipulates his vote, milk wins the first one. Soda makes was that one? Well, milk wins. And then milk versus juice. Milk wins the first one. Juice wins the second one. But and juice wins the third one. But now look what happens when juice goes against soda. So soda wins the first one. Soda wins the second one. Juice wins the third one. We do not have a winner. There's no winner. There's no winner. We have a counter say voting paradox where it's that shell game. Juice loses to soda. Soda loses to milk. Imagine that. And milk loses to juice. So it's a big shell game. There's no winner. Counter say voting paradox, but that's what John wants. He doesn't want soda. He, he wants no decision. He wants to throw a wrench 
in the words. So there's no decision. All right. Number two. Again, this is a five by four. You're not going to see something this complicated on, on the quiz or on the, any of the assessments. Because you can't see, you can't break up the candidates evenly. You got four candidates among five voters. And because we're talking about majority rule and counter say method, we, we try to keep our votes odd. Now, if this was a five by five, I could do it. I could do it real, I could recognize it really easily and manipulate it. Because it's a five by five rows or five columns by four rows, it's much more difficult. But let's look at this. We can we can identify who's motivated by seeing who who wins here. Candidate A versus candidate B is just counter kind of say it's the first vote, it's the vote or second, it's the third vote, the fourth vote goes to A, fifth vote goes to B, so B wins. Now B is going to take on C. So B wins that one, B wins the second voter, B wins the third voter, C wins the fourth voter and, and the fifth voter. So B wins that one. So B versus D, B wins voter one, B wins voter two, B win, D wins voter three, B wins voter four, B wins voter five. So B is our winner. So now in the original preference table, you're gonna circle candidate B. And you can see, there's, now, the only one that's not motivated to change this is voter two. Well, voter one is motivated. Voter three is motivated. Voter four is motivated. And voter five is motivated. And did any of them, any of those voters vote the same way? They didn't. They're all slightly different. So that's where I would start. But this problem, I want you to be able to, to, to recognize and identify voters that are motivated to change the outcome of the election. And that's by going through the counter stage voting method, circling the winner and seeing who got what. Now, now who's motivated the most is probably where you want to start. So, but notice that they can only move B so far down. They can only move candidate B one down one box. Whereas voter five, voter three and voter one all could vote candidate B down two boxes. So they might be able to, like, like voter one might be able to make candidate A win. I mean, they may not be able to get counter say voting paradox, but they may be able to upset, upend candidate B so someone else wins. So but then again, you gotta think a rational person is not gonna be, is not gonna settle for like, like Voter one is not going to be happy if candidate C or candidate D wins because that's a lesser preference than their second choice, candidate B, and that's who won this election. Questions on that? Don't worry about don't make this this is don't don't worry about this one. This one's ugly. Okay. By by what show how far down the list on their preference ballot that, oh, that it. candidate it's, is. Okay, yeah. So he's really motivated, but they can only drop candidate B one notch. It may, that may not have any, any effect. So again, people that are motivated may not be able to do anything different to, do, to change the outcome. That said, I'm gonna skip this one. I've already told you what we're dealing with here. This is a three by three. You should be able to do this. You should be able to look at this and say, let's see, B, A, T. Oh, I got two A's here. There, I got two T's here. So who's who's who, who's voter am I going to manipulate? Well, I can change this one. If I change this order on Bart's, then I can have a T and an A spread out along each row. So I can manipulate Bart's vote. Everybody, Maggie and Lisa, they're going to vote the same way. Okay, are we skipping number three? Yeah, we're skipping number three. If you really get bored next week, I'll come back to it. But then T is going to be there and A is there. Now, now notice my rows. Everything is spread out. 
BAT, there's no doubles there. T8BA, there's no repeats. This is going to be a condensate voting paradox. I look at it right now, I, I can tell you that's what's going to happen. There's going to be no winner. You should be able to look at patterns like that and create them. So let's look and evaluate who wins here. So B versus A, well, B gets the first vote, A wins. A versus T, A wins the first one, A wins the second one, A is my winner. This one, there's going to be no winner. So I'm going to start out with my dominant player, A versus B. So A versus B, B wins there, A wins there, A beats the B. So now A versus T. T wins there. A wins there, but T upsets A. Now T versus B. B wins there. B wins the second Maggie's vote, and T wins the last one. We have counter say voting paradox. There's no winner. Is everybody spaced out in rows? That's what it looks like. All right, number five. Now this is a five by four. But I, I'm, I am able, able to manipulate this in such a way that I have a scenario that's going to change the outcome. I have a scenario that's going to change that outcome. Mm -hmm. Yep, it wins. That's Converse's method. All right, let's look at this. Go into my notes. It's very, it's very printed it off. Let's see if I can let's see if I can get it. So what I'm gonna do first is see who wins. So Jim versus movie. Students are trying to decide which reward they're gonna receive. So Jim versus movie. Samantha votes for Jim. Jim wins there, movie wins here. Jim over movie for Derek. Movie over Jim with Vanessa, movie over Jim. For Vanessa, so movie wins, and so movie's gonna go versus Nap. Do you think Nap would win? Because Gabriel, Manuel, Alina, you got your heads on me. What, what about Sergio? The what? I'm sorry. Um, so let's see. You guys just want to go to a movie. You want to take a nap? Well, Nap. Movie. I'm oh, sorry, guys. We're going. We're turning on a movie. Did that wake everybody up? Now, movie versus uh, the computer. Being on the computer, whatever you do on the computer. So, movie wins the first one. Movie wins the second one. But then, Jared votes for computer over movie. Vanessa, movie over computer. So, we're going to go see a movie. All right. So, what did I say? Look at where movie is number one. <laughs> and you move them down a, a level. You move down, down a level. Okay. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to put this is my sincere, what we started with. And then this is going to be my manipulated one. So I'm going to manipulate Vanessa here. I'm going to manipulate her vote. And then nap, computer, gym, movie. So now computer, I'm gonna put in first place. And movie is gonna be second place. And nap and gym. And then got computer, movie, gym, nap. All right, you guys ready? <clears throat> Did you switch them just because they had the same in the first row? Yeah, there were duplicates there, and this was number one. Now there is duplicate in the second row. Now there's duplicates of computer. So computer is going to be pretty strong. Could there be a difference between Bill and Phil? No, right? Um, we could change this with Bill too, but I'm not sure what the outcome would be. So it doesn't matter. 
it sometimes it, it that might make nap more that might yeah that, that, that might be also a solution I, I didn't solve it that way but i, I can look at it now there's well it's also the problem here too is i'm putting triple computers on this row yeah. and i don't know if that matters but we'll see we'll, we'll test it so some of this is trial and error sometimes it just works out so i'm going to do this well yeah either way there would be double movie if you did movie enough Maybe double movie, but now we have double. Yeah, it's not. See, that's why I say it's not pretty. It's not obvious. <laughs> so we gotta just try it. So Jim wins there. Movie wins the second one. Jim wins the third one. Movie wins the fourth one, and then movie. So now movie. Let me do this way. Let me go down here. Use the space. Movie versus uh, uh, nap. Maybe I should go computer. Movie versus computer, because I changed that. Computer should win this one. So I got movie, I got movie, I got computer, 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 computer wins. Now let's go computer versus uh, taking a nap. Computer versus nap. So, Nap wins Samantha's vote. Bill votes for for Nap. Derek votes for Nap. Vanessa and Sarah both vote for, for computer. So Nap beats computer. So how about Nap versus Jim? See what happens there. So Jim wins the first one. Going to the gym. Who, who goes to the gym here? Everybody work out. Nobody. So good. So Jim wins here. Nap wins Bill's vote. Nap's got Derek's vote. Nap has got Vanessa's vote. Is that right? Did Nap win over Jim? Nap, Nap wins, yeah. Jim, Jim loses. Jim loses. Nap, Jim loses. So Jim wins. Jim? I'm sorry, Nap wins. So who does who does Nap lose to? Does that Nap lose to uh, movie? Let's see if Nap loses to movie. Oh yeah, maybe this is no. Yeah, um, I already did that. So movie wins there. Let me do this. I'll redraw this. So movie wins Samantha's vote. Movie wins Bill's vote. Nap wins Derek's votes. Vanessa votes for movie, movie wins. Okay, that's the one that, that Nap loses to. So I created a counter say voting paradox by doing that. I picked, I picked Jim, but Jim won over Nap. So I, I was trying to find the candidate that would lose to Nap. That's why I switched it up. So now we got this, we got a four way counter say voting paradox here. Because, uh, <clears throat> Jim loses to movie, but movie loses to computer, and computer loses to nap. And nap, wait, wait, wait. Does nap lose to, to Jim? No, nap loses to to, to nap, movie. Nap loses. So we don't quite have it. So I thought it was a four-way. Last time I did it was a four-way. It's only a three-way here. So, all right, questions on that? Because Jim lost to music, so, oh well. All right, that's the last one we're gonna do. You have the rest of the class period. Wait, how to work on these. Say so again? How would you do number six? How would you do number six? Do the, do the problem, figure out who's going to win, then yeah, identify who is motivated to change the outcome. Can I move voter to yeah, voter yeah. 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 Um, Let's look. Let's look. 
We have to identify who's motivated first, though. And to identify who's motivated, we've got to see who wins the contest. The reader counter says again. So A versus B. So A wins the first one, wins the second one, then B wins the next two, then A prevails. Now, how, how does A go against C? Well, A wins the first one, wins the second one, wins the third one, fourth one. So A is our winner. So identify where A is. So it's interesting that A has only got two votes that are in first place. So identify voter three, voter four, and voter five are all motivated to do something. Can they do anything? Can they do anything? Well, <clears throat> to change it, you're going to take voter A and move them down. Move them down one. Um, voter A is already losing to C. Adding one more vote is not going to change much. But the, why am I doing this? You see, B, C, see the difference between A and C? C needs more than one vote. They need two votes. And now we're only manipulating one voter. So if I'm, I'm not going to manipulate these two and make C win those contests because I, I need more than one vote. But this one right here, four to five. If I manipulate his vote, I can get B to take a vote away from A and win. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to create a scenario where B is dominant. No, I'm not. I'm not going to create that. So I'm going to, I'm going to manipulate voter five. So voter one and voter two is going to have the same preference ballot. You guys see that these are identical it's like voter three and four voted the same voter one and two voted exactly the same so this is the one i'm going to manipulate and i'm going to manipulate this by moving voter candidate a down one so this is going to be c b a right so now watch because you got to look at the, the spacing here how far away they are. Uh, C, there's nothing I can do to change this by manipulating one vote. Candidate C needs two votes. I would have to manipulate two people. We'd have to have a group manipulation or collusion happening. And that, that's not something we're looking at right now. We're looking at one voter, one vote, changing that one vote to try to change the outcome. So let's see what we got here. So A, is gonna, I'm gonna put A right against B right away. A, B, B, so B should win this. So A gets the first one, gets the second one, but then B wins the next three. But now B is weak against C. C's gonna win. C wins the first one, C wins the second one, B wins the third one, B wins the fourth one, but look at voter five. And when C is paired up with A, Look what happens. A gets the first two, beats them in the third row. Yeah. In the fourth row, you see we still have that scenario four to one. So this is counter say voting paradox that we've created. And so you got to look at the at who to, to move, who's close in the ranks, and then you identify what you can do about it. So this is a problem with the counter say voting paradox. This is a counter. This is a problem on how to identify motivated voters and how to create counter says voting paradox. That's what the goal is. The goal is to create voting paradox. So yep. the reason why they wouldn't switch voter three or voter four to A and C is because then it would be too many votes for C, right? So yeah. Well, if I switched a manipulated voter three or voter four, I can only do one at a time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All I'm going to do is A is going to have three votes and c is going to have two votes so a is still going to win uh -huh. so that, that's not going to make that's not going to make it's not going to change the outcome but because this because a and b are so close together there was in one yeah when i change them i'm changing the outcome gotcha. between a 
and, and C is still going to win over B just by making that little, a little change. All right. So if you look at who's in the first, they're not motivated to do anything. They're not going to change it. But these guys are motivated to change, but this, this, this change isn't going to make any difference. This change, one change is going to make a difference because A is stomping on candidate C. I'm going to leave it to that. Stomping. Yeah, four to one. That's a landslide. That's 80% of the vote compared to 20%. Out of 100 votes, A got 80. Candidate C got 20. That's uh, stomping. That's. Uh, that's a that's a tough matchup. 